When we watch the top swimmers on TV or in the water, they seem to just have an effortless technique. But teams with that, they also have a huge amount of power. In order to gain that power, they're quite often using training aids such as hand paddles, a pool boy, maybe a band, even a drag suit and so on. But why they use them and how they use them is really important. That's what I'm here to help you with today. And we're gonna start with the pool boy. I'm going to assume that most of you have become acquainted with a pool boy before, but just in case you haven't, the idea is you place this between your thighs and by doing that, it's actually gonna prevent you from being able to kick your legs. Well, that's the idea at least. And then obviously isolates the arms and the upper body. And I've always been a real firm believer of using the pool boy in my swim training. Even if I do have a, a slight tendency to flutter my legs from time to time, even whilst I've got the pool boy in there, but that is a really good point because a nice progression of using a pool boy is actually to add the band in. And you can make this out of an old tube or even an old inner tube that you might use for your bike. And I should just tie a knot to whatever sort of tightness you want. Wrap that around your ankles and that will really stop you from being able to flutter those legs. And personally, just doing band work without the pool boy is an absolute killer for me. I swear I just have heavier legs than most people. But actually, it's a really good point. So if you're using a band or whether you're using a pool boy, it's really important you keep your stroke rate up. Otherwise, your legs are going to sink. It essentially forces you to produce power. And actually by doing so, it can really help to keep your stroke balanced and force you into getting that nice high elbow during that catch phase. Now, if you are new to pool work or you're starting to introduce using just a band or using a band with the pool boy, I'd really recommend keeping the reps really short. Something like 50 meters, just to make sure that you get that quality out on each of those reps. And actually something that I've really enjoyed doing in the past to improve my power for my swimming is actually doing some short sprints off the wall, something like 10 to 15 meters all out and then just easy for the remainder of the length. And actually by doing that, it can actually really increase that strength under fatigue as you swim off after that sprint. And now for the hand paddles. And these are pretty much a staple within any experienced swimmer's training routine for two main reasons. One for technique, as they try to implement and just work on their good technique. And the other, which is more important for today's video, and that is improving strength and power. And this is pretty much as specific as it gets because by wearing hand paddles, you're increasing the surface area of effectively your hands and therefore the resistance through your strokes. And actually by increasing this surface area in the resistance, we actually start to accentuate the pulling action of the stroke a lot more. We just start to feel the water a lot more. We start to get an earlier catch, a good catch, which a lot of people are missing, a good pull phase and so on. Essentially making that stroke stronger and more efficient. And a real bonus for me at least is that we get to go faster, as fast as race pace, if not faster. That's really good fun. But if you are introducing paddle work for the first time, then again, just start introducing this gradually as you can start to put strain through the shoulders. So keep those reps short, maybe around 200 meters. And once you have progressed that with a little bit of time, start introducing the pool boy, or if you like, even the band. Now, if you're a swimmer or a triathlete, we all tend to focus a lot on the actual physical swimming part of swimming and forget about using gym work. And some of us out there actually have preconceptions about gym work in the sense that we don't need to do it, we don't want to bulk up, or we simply can't fit it in around other swimming, cycling, or running training. However, I would really recommend it. It's a really time efficient way of improving our strength. And in my opinion, essential. And actually one of the simplest methods to improving strength is actually the good old press up or pull up. Now you can also bring that gym session to the pool. And by that I mean using some drag shorts to increase the resistance and therefore the power that you're having to put out on each stroke. Now I'm actually using some run shorts today. You can use other items of clothing such as pajama bottoms, or you can get some dedicated drag shorts, which in my opinion are really good and probably the preferred option just because they allow you to crack on your swimming pretty much undisrupted. Now I'd use these in a lot of my swims as a youngster and you just simply wear them throughout a whole session. If you want to, you could take them off for a main set or a quality hard session where you really wanna feel that form, feel efficient and feel fast. 
And let's not forget the legs. Now we tend to associate strength and power a lot with our upper body and our arms, but actually by improving the strength and power of our legs, we can actually make our overall stroke a lot more efficient. And for those triathletes that may be watching this right now, if you think about it, you can move your legs a lot quicker than you can move your arms, which is really important in the start of a triathlon. So if we can improve the strength and power of our legs, we may be able to get away from that mass, that melee, the washing machine effect a lot more effectively and a lot quicker. Now it might sound slightly counterintuitive, but a really effective way of improving the strength and power of our legs is actually by using some fins. I know because they'll make us faster, but actually in a similar way to using paddles, they increase the surface area of our foot. So each time we kick up and down, they're gonna require a lot more of the muscles and in turn that'll hopefully improve the strength and power of our legs. And as I've said with all our drills already, just introduce these with time. And if you're gonna be buying fins for the first time, opt for some short ones like these. And finally, mix up the strokes that you're using during a swim work. By doing that, you can actually start to use a wider range of muscles and essentially keep the body guessing. Now, you're gonna hate me here, but a really good one for improving the strength in your stroke is actually butterfly. Now, what I tended to do was actually have a dedicated strength session each week where I do some of these other exercises and drills that I've just mentioned and start including some of these other strokes, maybe just doing half a length of butterfly or backstroke or breaststroke and then swimming off freestyle. So you're not doing too much, but it's enough that it's gonna fatigue you. Now, if you have enjoyed today's video, hit that thumbs up button. If you'd like to see more from GTN, click on the globe and subscribe to the channel. And if you hit that bell icon, you'll get notified each time one of our videos comes out. If you'd like to see a little bit more about other strokes for triathlon, if you are a triathlete, you can see that by clicking just down here. And if you'd like to see some exercises that you can perform on the land to improve your strength in the water, you can see that by clicking just down here.